That's better. That great. We are live in the Santan Valley, and this is CAC Live on uh, this glorious Thursday morning, and we have a very, very special show. Nancy Kaywood is here with her husband, Al, and, and Nancy is an inductee into the 2011 Central Arizona College Wall of Success, and uh, today we wanted to invite Nancy in. We had her on a few months ago before the event uh, from from her office, which is a farm area out in uh southern california correct el centro el centro and uh, she works for uc davis but we wanted to get her into the studio with her husband al and uh listen to some of their music and welcome we're, we're really excited you're here well, we're really thank excited you. to be here thank you yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity it's uh you know last year when you were inducted um and most most hall of fames and wall successes and, and when you do that kind of stuff people get up and they give their speeches and we asked you guys to get up and play. And, and what was that? It was, and everybody remembers that because it was different and it was really unique and it was a lot of fun with the music. Can you, can you describe your kind of feeling during that whole sort of induction and then getting up and playing in front of uh, the entire people that were there that day? Well, let me, first let me get you to scoot up to your mics a little okay. bit there. There we go. Yeah, we're going to transition that, a little way bit. everyone can hear. Well, we're going to transition a little bit back because we're going to have music throughout yeah, the absolutely. program today. Right. So yeah, We're ready to do okay. it. Well, first of all, when I won the award, I was very surprised and I was very excited. And um, that evening when I got out there, there was a lot of people that I knew. And they had the PowerPoints showing on the big screen. And I felt very proud to see my work up on that big screen. Mm -hmm. And I was very excited to get up there and talk about what we do and how CAC has been such a part of my life. And um, so afterwards, it was kind of like we were holding back on the music because we, we wanted that to be our grand finale. <laughs> and so we got up and we played Boil 'em Cabbage Down. And I was very happy to see people out in the audience clapping. Huh. And, you know, it just is fun to see people enjoy your music. Fiddle is a happy instrument. We're going to talk a lot about your music, some of the stuff that you're involved with. But let's, let's remind some of the listeners, especially some of the new ones, that what do, what do you do for UC Davis and where is it lo exactly where is it located? Okay. Okay, um, we are actually with the uh, ANR. It's the Agricultural and Natural Resources Division of the University of California. And um, in 2001, I was working for the Natural Resource Conservation Districts in Pinal County. And um, we were doing programming at the University of Arizona Maricopa Ag Center. I was asked, or I was told that there was a position open for at um, the University of California Desert Research and Extension Center. And I went over there, and I, I was so excited because I could give birth to a program. And that's what I really wanted to do. And so um, I was uh, visiting with them, and they said if the grant came through, they would open a position, and then I would go through the application process. And about six months later, all of a sudden, this grant from the National Science Foundation came through, and I went and interviewed and was chosen. I was the lucky one, and I was chosen, and I got to give birth to an after-school program. Knew I would not be staying there if I didn't do something more with the position. So I started the Farm Smart program, and we started offering school visits to teachers to bring their kids out to the farm. We continued doing the after-school program, and after three years, then I was going to be out of there. But the local farmers, a farmer called me, Al Kalen, and he said, I heard that uh, bad rumor about you. And I said, what is it? He said, well, I heard you're going to be leaving us. And I said, if, if funding doesn't come through, I, you know, I don't know what we're going to do. And he went to the Farm Bureau, 
in Imperial County and they went to the Imperial Irrigation District and they now donate $50,000 a year towards this program. Wow. How, so, how, how long have you been doing it? Um, I just uh, 10 years uh, oh. last October, so I'm going into my 11th year. Now, you're, you're born and raised in Arizona. Casa Grande, born and raised. So this program had to be pretty special to lure you away from the area. Yeah, it was hard to leave because my whole family's here. My mom and dad, my dad just turned 90, and he won the Ranchers and Farmers Hall of Fame Award in um, 2010. And um, he's 90, and my mom is, I won't tell her age, she'll be mad. <laughs> and so anyway, but um, we, they still are very active in farming. We farm at 11 Mile Corner. We raise cotton and alfalfa. There's not much water in the dam right now, so... We're just depending on rainwater, and hopefully the dam will fill. My son, um, he's a he farms, and he said he got his his um, education through Grandpa's school of hard knocks of <laughs> agriculture. But anyway, um, and he graduated from CAC just recently, and he has a fire science degree. Wow! And he's um, a paramedic and a firefighter at Eloy, and he lives on the farm with his wife and two, my two grandchildren. And um, Anyway, so he works at Eloy Fire, and then he raises cotton and alfalfa. Was he at your induction ceremony last yes, year? Yes, he was. Yes, and he, and he was. was going to school at the time, or uh, was actually, he done? At that he time? was uh, going to graduate in December. Okay. And so he was almost ready to graduate, and um, he he did it. He we're, we're real proud of him. So when you when you look at you talk about, and we've talked off the air, and we've talked in some phone conversations about your love for CAC and and your love for the area. But going to Southern California, you guys never, you still live in this area, though. You come back during the summers and during holidays. We come back, well, um, yes, we come back in the summers. And I go back to El Centro a couple of times during the summer, usually. And then we um, also come home on the holidays and the weekends, some t- long weekends. And we're, we're doing farm tours on our, our farm in Casa Grande on the weekends. Explain what that is, exactly. We have a lot of winter visitors here, and they're very, very uh, curious about cotton. And so we started doing cotton farm tours, and we saw over 1,200 winter visitors wow. on our farm last year in Dece- November, December, and January. And um, they want to learn about cotton's long journey from seed to fiber. And then we take them, we start up a cotton picker and show them the spindles and how the, the baskets work and then the, uh, how they dump cotton into modules and make the module. We talk to them about water conservation and, you know, the fact that we are on a desert and we're low on water, and then we take them on hay wagons out to our cotton field and let them pick cotton. You know, it's it's funny because there seems to be a real interest, and maybe it's just something different, but with a lot of the programs that have developed on, like, History Channel and Modern Marvels, those kind of programs where people have an interest in processes, manufacturing processes. Yes. Is that what you're seeing? It's just something, as opposed to going, you know, you go to the national historical sites but you go that so many times this is something completely different most people probably don't have an opportunity to walk into a cotton farm and figure out how's this really made no they don't uh we find that a lot of people don't even know where their food and fiber come from and so (laughs) we um it gives us a chance to show them um a working farm and um learn about the process of cotton in el centro it's it's amazing how many people have never been on a farm whether it be children because we see people from ages three to 99 just about and um one lady was in the field and she was jumping up and down she goes i picked a broccoli and i'm like no you picked a cauliflower (laughs) and so you know they just don't know and some one one lady was there and she had picked her first radish and she goes i thought they grew on bushes (laughs) <laughs> so it gives us an opportunity to teach them where their food comes from. How did CAC impact your life, the career you have now? How did it, imp- how did it lead you down that path? I attribute CAC to my success completely because I started out after high school at Arizona State University, and it was too big. I wasn't used to that. <laughs> I grew up in Casa Grande. And so I returned to CAC as an older student, and I'm not going to say how old, but an older <laughs> student. And um, I found that it was one-on-one, a lot of one-on-one. And I tell you, biology scared me because I hadn't been in school for so long, and that was one of my first courses. And I failed miserably the first test. And uh, Mr. Cavaney was the instructor at that time. And so he let us uh, have one free test, and that was it. And I thought, I better shape up and get this figured out. And by the end of that semester, I came in second in the class, and he recommended me for the honors program. Wow. And after that point, it was uh, Dr. Taylor and um, Dr. Gessner and Mr. Mills. And uh, those 
those instructors were fabulous because they gave you the one-on-one. -on -one. They really taught me how to study and they prepared me for going on to Arizona State University. And I, the honors program meant a lot to me. It was a lot of hard work, but also it gave me a good foundation. Did it give you confidence too? Yes, because we had to get up and speak a lot. We had to do our <laughs> honors projects, and that was a big thing. And so I think that I, I tell everybody um, from Cass Grant or anybody that's thinking about a career, go to a junior college first. Anybody in Cass Grant, I tell them, go to CAC because it's a good transition from high school on to a university. You, you said that you had to get up and speak were you, as, as when you were younger. Were you nervous about that? Oh, yeah. So how do you perform now? Or how, were you always able to perform? Or was, did that no. come later, too? I was learning how to play the fiddle because it's a happy instrument. Mm. And kind, I was in, kind of in the learning process when I went to CAC. And by getting up and speaking at um, events at Central Arizona College, I also found that um, it made fiddling easier. You, you just get used to being in front of an audience. And now I'm used to speaking in front of a lot of audiences, and I, the more the better. you know. And I just spoke at an agribusiness council in Phoenix on the 19th of May, and I reflected back, and I thought, yeah, CAC. <laughs> they helped me get my foundation. I want to ask uh, your husband, Al, a question, because I, you said you went to Michigan State. I did, yes. Now, now you come to this area, and you see what CAC has done oh, yes. for Nancy uh -huh. and and, you know, and for your family, can from a from a perspective of coming from a different part of the country, how do you see CAC? Well, it, it would it was it, it fits. It would have been my ideal choice, having knowing what I do know now. My first year at Michigan State, these you know six hundred person lecture halls were just daunting, <laughs> and I I, I, yeah. I, I was I was in a, a a C student all the way, and uh, I just it was just too overwhelming. And uh, if, if there had been a community college to start at, it would have been, a, I'm sure, a much easier transition. Last, so. year, last year when, when we asked the two of you to perform, <laughs> you, got, you're both, you, you said you're happy people, but you're really genuinely excited to, uh -huh. to, to oh, do this. And when you wow. got asked to do this in front of CAC, to come back to Nancy's alma mater and yeah. do that, what was that experience like for you? Well, I just wanted to make sure I didn't forget the words. <laughs> 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 and, and, and I was breathing good because, you know, y y the anxiety is... is uh, uh, is quite high and um, it, it's uh, it, that's what the stage uh, time has done is help help teach you to cope with the anxiety and just you know project it in passion and, and love for the music so it was but you know I, I, I still find myself choking up a little bit and, uh, and, had, and I had to keep keep concentrating on breathing you know so that we could get the music going for it, it was a very exciting time what was like what was it like for you in the audience seeing Nancy get up and receive that honor Wow, I mean, uh, I just, uh, just she was ten feet tall <laughs> in my eyes. She was just ten feet tall, you know, just a, just a, a, a treasure and a, a star among stars. And all the people that were smiling, I looked around the audience, and a lot of people were smiling. And then when we were playing the music, they were just so spontaneously responding, you know, with clapping and hooping and hollering in there. It was quite fun. It's it, the music is really leads you to that i mean obviously there's all kinds of music in the world but this type of music really lends itself to you all you feel yourself even if you if it's not a genre you typically listen to you automatically start clapping or yeah. you're stomping your foot why is that I don't know. you know i think that um fiddling comes from all over the world first of all and um it's been brought to the united states it's kind of um a melting pot of music mm -hmm. and it's the roots of bluegrass music and people that don't even think they like fiddle music tend to like it because it's lively and it's it's foot stomping people just think that they need to you know it, it's something to clap your hands to and and it gets people moving and um we travel all over with fiddle music and i incorporate music into every one of my programs in el centro and as well as our winter visitor program and then when we do our farm tours at the farm while we're waiting for people to gather we play music and that's just yeah fun it's just fun and i think people really do enjoy it the teachers that come to the program yeah. sometimes will start doing a do -si do or a circle <laughs> l man left they'll start doing square dancing um just spontaneously um at, at random uh, because the music just seems to grab a hold of them and we've been on stage at outdoor bluegrass concerts and people um don't typically dance at those kind of venues but when they hear that fiddle music we've had it happen to us where they'll be out in the back they'll just start getting up and dancing on the grass yeah fiddling has um it taken us every place it's taken us so many places we end up playing at festivals we play on ranches we played for creek parties we played for barbecues and a lot of civic events and um 
we also, as I said, we play it at our programs. And so we brought it into our lives. It's a part of my life that I'm able to incorporate into my professional life. It, it, it's a lot of it sounds like you guys have a lot of fun, and uh, it's 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 really great to c- c- come into the studio. We're going to get you guys to play a little bit more music here. I do want to remind listeners that uh, this uh, Central Arizona College Wall Success started back in 2009. It's a, it's akin to a Hall of Fame type of an event. Uh, it's punctuated by the Extraordinary uh, Alumni Achievement Award, and the individuals receive that, and then they're basically enshrined on the Wall of Success which uh, this year will take place on November 16th. We're going to do it in our Penn Center this year, which will be reopened. It will be a, lot of, be a lot of fun. And anybody can nominate. We've simplified the process this year. If you are a CAC alum or you know a CAC alum, you simply just contact Stella Garcia and the Public Relations Department. And her email is stella.garcia at centralaz.edu. Or you can call her at 520-494-5204. That's... 520-494-5204 and just submit a name and contact information and then we'll tra- track your nominees down and get the information for the uh, induction for those being evaluated and um, right now today we've been talking with uh, Nancy Kaywood her husband Al and they've brought their instruments we open the show with some music we want to get a couple more songs here sure. so why don't you guys play two more songs and we'll go into a break and talk more about the Farm Smart program and I think before we get started you guys write a lot of your own music yes we, we do and and, and how, how does that work you guys collaborate or do you have different strengths well first of all we like our programs to meet the standards for Arizona and California because we do some Yuma stuff as well and we done Cass Grand and so right we uh we have a program on water conservation, and so Al wrote the music to a song called I'm a Dudley Dewdrop, and Dudley <laughs> is our mascot, and he's a little water droplet who wears a, wa- a life raft, a- a life ring, and it says, please help save me. <laughs> and so we wrote a song called, or he wrote the song I'm a Dudley Dewdrop from my concept of water conservation. And, and I'll add that uh, a lot of this occurs during our summer recharge. <laughs> yes. uh, with, you know, her, her schedule allows her some time off during the summer. Um, and so we would use that time to travel and just go to maybe a music festival or two and just get it on the, on the open road. And we'll be listening to songs on the iPod in the, in the car. And, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the idea for this Dudley Dewdrop came from the Civil War medley eating goober peas. And at some point in time, uh, it, while that song was playing, the idea that we needed a song for water conservation and so um, she came up with a mascot, a little water droplet, and I said, let's name him Dudley Dewdrop. Um, and um, then, then the melody for the song just came out of Goober Peace. And yeah. so I guess we should play that. And one of our other songs that we play is, it's called the bus song. And every kid comes out on the bus, and it's to the old Woody Guthrie song, the car, the song. car song. And he just changed the words, so all summer long I... I, I heard all the little noises he has to make to make that song work, and that was a that was a real trip. <laughs> but the kids love it. Yeah, it's a, it's a standard now. So, and, and you you gear a lot of this toward the toward children, or you yes. do kind of a range of stuff. We do a range of stuff. Most of our our stuff is attributed or is um, aimed for adults in in our winter visitor program and some of the performances that we put on is adults. But we do so many kids songs because. We reach about 9,000 kids a year. Wow. You know, we, when we, we got to where we had so many songs, um, the teachers started asking us to record some of them. And so we did. We made a CD with uh, accompanying lyrics and a, and a, and a booklet. And, uh, and we do have, Joe, jo, we have a couple of CDs right there. Why don't we show the, the audience? Those, and it, we, we ran out of the Farm Smart melodies for the children, but these two are ones we mm-hmm. use for the winter visitors. And... Um, uh, we just called it. The, we titled the series "From Harvest to Hoedown, Volume One and Volume Two, and these are just old-time ta- songs and some country songs that uh, um, Nancy and I and, and some close friends, Dorothy Wilsey from Coolidge and some other uh, musicians, uh, recorded. Why don't you hold this up in front of your camera there so people can see it? And which one is this? This is Volume Two. This has about 25 songs on it. Yeah, hold it up a little bit higher, right, right there. Yeah, a little bit higher. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, while he's doing yeah. that, I want to say that some of the teachers have commented that when we give them a CD, they'll say, I can bring just a little bit of Farm Smart back to my classroom, and we can live Farm Smart every day. <laughs> That's great. And then, well, people, if and you guys hand, you guys sell these and... Hand, and well, teachers get them for free, giveaways. yeah. This is volume one, and uh, it's a reprise edition because this, we found a really neat song an Autoheart friend of mine uh, wrote called I'm Getting Old. 
and uh, we do it for the winter visitors every year, uh, every day for lunch when uh, someone has a birthday. Right. So, so what song are we going to hear now? I'm going to do a song called um, Wilson's Clog, and this is one that we play at our winter visitor program, and they dance, they love this song. And so I'm going to stand up. You can stand up and uh, let the audience enjoy. You want, you want guitar back up on this one? Sure. Okay. I was hoping she'd say that. <laughs> Nancy Kaywood and her husband Al and a CAC Wall of Success inductee and take it away. Take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more with Nancy K. Wood about her time at Central Arizona College. You're listening to CAC Live on KQCK in the Santan Valley. Mike McCord, better than the rest. Dedicated to the community with integrity that matters, leadership that counts. I want to be the voice of District Number 2. I want to work for you, the citizens of Santan Valley. Vote for me, Mike McCord, on August 28, 2012. This message was paid for by the Mike McCord for County Supervisor Committee. Are you experiencing computer problems? Is your computer running slow, bogged down with viruses and spyware? You need a reliable and knowledgeable, trustworthy computer service company. Contact Computers, Networks, and More, located in Santan Valley. Get your computer or laptop running in top condition by a certified technician with 20 plus years experience and beta tester from Microsoft. Computers, Networks, and More provides repairs and solutions to any computer related issue, whether it's software, installation, troubleshooting, updates, or tune-ups. You can trust computers, networks, and more. Contact Jeff Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. to schedule an appointment. We can have you up and running quickly, usually within 48 hours. Located in Santan Valley, computers, networks, and more. We're here for you. Contact Jeff at 480-729-8899. That's 480-729-8899. Our family pets are such a big part of our lives. That's why Kelly's Critter Clips of Queen Creek and Sun Lakes has been providing pet grooming services for over 10 years. Your dog's comfort is very important to us. So we take the time to treat your pet with care, love, and professional attention it deserves. We welcome any size and breed and feature shampoo and conditioning, styling, flea and tick dips, ear cleaning, nail trimming, and so many other services that will leave your pet looking good and smelling good and feeling great, all at an affordable price. Located in Queen Creek and Sun Lakes, call now for an appointment, 480-655-5066. Kelly's Critter Clips. <coughs> When you visit Hill Family Dentistry in Santan Valley, dentist Dr. Tim Hill provides each patient with personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you and your family with services that will make you smile. With a full range of general, cosmetic, and specialty dentistry services, that will keep you and your family smiling. Our commitment to our community is to provide outstanding oral health. Hill Family Dentistry is located on 36359 Gansell Road in Santan Valley, diagonally across from Banner Ironwood Hospital. Evening and weekend appointments available. We accept most insurances and have in-office policies available for non-insured. Contact us today at 480-588-8127. Hill Family Dentistry. 
We are back live in the KQCK studios in the Santan Valley. Tom D. Camillo along with Joe Carrero, and we are talking with Nancy Kaywood and her husband Al. Nancy, a 2011 CAC Wall of Success inductee, and she's joined us here. I'm glad you came back for the summer so you can actually come into the studio this time. So much. This is totally fun. This is, uh, everybody that comes into Joe's studio is amazed the first time they come in. It'd be about, nice to hang out here for a while. Yeah. It's, I said Joe could throw the ultimate Super Bowl party in this place. Absolutely. So, this is a great place. So we're going to have some more music from you, and this is a water com- conservation song called Dudley Dewdrop. That you, yep. that you guys play on their in your fa- on your farm to the to the children, I guess, or to everybody. We play it for winter visitors here in Casa Grande and in El Centro. Okay, so you get the whole gamut of people. So let's hear this song. It's an original by Nancy Nell. <laughs> Well, I'm a Dudley Dewdrop falling from the sky. I drained onto the rivers from the mountains way up high. The Colorado River is but one of many homes. I float on down the river for miles and miles I roam. Dudley Dewdrop, watch the water flow. Part Dudley of the water cycle, Dewdrop, I help watch to the make water flow. Part of the water cycle, Dewdrop, I help to the make it flow. Please try not to waste me, it's important, don't you know? Now I have so many uses, too numerous to count. And if you try and count them, your fingers will run out. Oh, so many people are waiting just for me. So please try not to waste me, I'm as precious as can be. Watch the water flow, part of the water cycle, I help to make them grow. Don't leave to drop, watch the water flow. Please try not to waste me, it's important, don't you know? Please try not to waste me, it's important, don't you know? This next verse covers all the science standards. Well, I make my home in three states, but they're not on the map. It's liquids, gas, and solids, and that's a natural fact. When you drink me, I'm a liquid. When you boil me, I'm a gas. And when I'm frozen solid, I'm just as hard as glass. Now we're singing around. Dudley Dewdrop, watch the water flow. Part of the water cycle, I help to make it grow. Dudley Dewdrop, watch the water flow. Please try not to waste me, it's important, do Please try not to waste me, it's important, don't you know? Well, the song is almost over, it's been long enough. The subject's interesting, but rhyming's mighty tough. So I will say in closing, before the song will stop, please try to save water, it starts with just one drop. Dudley Dewdrop, watch the water flow. Part of the water cycle, I help to make it grow. Dudley Dewdrop, watch the water flow. Please try not to waste me, it's important, don't you know? Please try not to waste me, it's important, don't you know? Please try not to waste me, it's important, don't you know? Dudley, the dude drop. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So, Thank you. T- what was the inspiration for that song? Well, like I said, uh, uh, the, the, uh, we have a recording of, uh, of uh, Civil War songs. Uh, by the Second Regimental String Band from South Carolina, a, a, a Gettysburg reenactor group, and um, they sang that song "Goober Peas" on there, and so that melody just sort of struck. And they were uh, at the same time um, they were trying to develop a water conservation program um, in conjunction with the local irrigation district, your Imperial uh, Irrigation District, and so they were developing a mascot. And Nancy came up with this idea of a water droplet. And uh, we needed to have a name for him. And uh, remember old uh, uh, Dudley Do Right? Well, that 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 old uh, cartoon came forth somehow, and said, "Let's just name him Dudley Do Drop." And so that's that was the inspiration, and I, the, the words just sort of flowed pretty quickly, actually. So we had um, a seamstress make a water droplet for us, and then we put a life ring around it, and it says, please help save me. And we take that to all the schools. We take it, um, well, we have it set up when they come out to the farm, and um, also on our winter visitor program, because they don't realize a lot of times that we live in a desert and that um, everybody needs to be water savers. Especially now with the drought we got mm-hmm. going on. How, how, how much does the music help in getting your message across 
Oh, oh it's an geez. international language. And we have a lot of um, non-English speakers. And there's, um, you know, various teaching styles. And we always can use music to bring them together. We can, you know, even when we're talking and they don't understand, once we get our instruments out and um, we teach them new words and um, we do little antics and stuff with some of our songs and the children that are non-English speakers can relate to what we're doing. It's a teaching tool. The You're listening to CAC Live on the KQCK studio in the Santana Valley. Tom DiCamillo along with Joe Carrera. We have Nancy K. Wood and her husband Al joining us. Nancy, an inductee into the CAC Wall of Success. And Nancy, before we went on the air, you were telling me about an event that's been going on for more than two decades at your house. Yes. Tell, tell the listeners what this is about. Uh, well, 25 years ago, I started a fiddle jam at my house, and, and I was just barely learning to play the fiddle. And it was a way just to bring people together, and we could learn from each other. Mm. And through the years, more and more people start come, started coming. And this is in Casa Grande. It's in Casa Grande, yes. And um, we have anywhere between 40 and 125 people show up every year. It's um, the weekend before Thanksgiving. It's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, because of my work schedule, many people beat me to my own party, and they camp out <laughs> back, and they get together. They know what to do. I don't have to entertain them. And then um, I, it's tradition. I make green chili. My mother helps me, and uh, we do our good old pinto beans, and we have everybody come in for dinner that night, and they contribute by bringing other potluck foods. And then the next morning, I make chorizo and eggs and biscuits and gravy because, you know, these people are camping there. And a lot of people from town just come locally and, and come over for the day, but they'll stop by for breakfast. And Definitely. a lot of them stay at local motels because they're not RVing anymore. It's, it's just a fun weekend. We have jams throughout our house. We've even had, I found jams in our bathrooms and <laughs> the, my closet and our backyard, side yard, out at the RVs. Lots and lots of fiddles. So, and people just get together and just play music. And yeah, yeah, they just find little circles that they fit in with. We can have everybody from beginners to professionals. And um, there's just little music jams going on all over my parents' property and our property. <laughs> A lot of workshops, too. Yeah. So, and anybody can attend this? Oh, anybody yeah. can That's attend. We have lots of pickers and grinners. And they come from all over the country to come? They come from Canada. Canada? We've had them wow. from Australia, England, all over the United States. A lot of them are winter visitors. And it's right at the start of winter visitor season, and everybody's really wanting to play some tunes. It sounds like, it just sounds like a lot of fun, like sort of a throwback to, to you know, local communities. It going is. to the park or going to a church mm -hmm. event or mm -hmm. something like that. What inspired you to, to do this? Um, I was I was craving music really bad mm. and it, it started out um, on an earlier date when most of the winter visitors were gone and I just had local people come over and then eventually I had to sort of find a weekend where people could all attend and there were so many winter visitors and I wanted to include them in it as well and I settled on this weekend probably 20 years ago and um, we were going to end it five years ago and we made up mugs that said 20 years of fiddling around at Nancy's house and um, when I gave the mugs out, people said, well, we're coming back next year anyway, so you might as well forget about <laughs> ending this thing. So we're still going. So this is the fifth year of the last uh, annual jam, <laughs> fifth anniversary of the last jam. It's like the Who show. concerts. That yeah. The last tour kept going on and right. on and on. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, in, <laughs> in 1982, I went to the Farewell Who concert tour. They were still going 20 it's years later. 20 years. Yes. So uh, do people like contact you throughout the year or um, to say hey we're coming or they tell me the year before they're coming usually <laughs> yeah. and then also they, they, they put it into up. the um the arizona fiddle association newsletter and um desert bluegrass has had it in their newsletters and people just hear about it by word of mouth and they'll call me and they go is it okay to come and i'm like you bet it's open for everybody and you have to have fun when you come here uh, before you performed at CAC during your Wall of Success and induction. <laughs> Had you ever ever performed at CAC before? Uh, yes. I was in the honors program, and I wrote my final paper on um, the importance of music in your life. You know, And um, I, I gave my um, presentation, and then I followed it by fiddle music. Where did you do the presentation? Do you remember? Penn Center. In the Penn Center? Uh, one of them was in the Penn Center, and then I did one in um, the English building where they had the seminars. And uh, were you nervous at that time? No, it was fun. Well, it was, uh, it's, the honors program is just a terrific program. You touched on a little bit uh, earlier, but it's obviously one of those signature programs, the CAC, 
that the students get out there. I mean, how much of it, it, it obviously made a huge impact on your life. The honors program, Central Arizona College, as I said, made a huge impact, but the honors program was an incredible program because the um, instructors get up close and personal, and they, I mean, they really mm. make sure that you do things right. I was having a few problems with some, <laughs> writing a paper, and I remember Dr. Taylor just slashing with red marks, and I was ready to cry because <laughs> I knew the whole thing was going to be rewritten, and there were not computers at that time. And so anyway, but I'm telling you, they, they really rode you and got you to do things the right way, and they communicated with you, and we had meetings, and um, it was just such a great experience to go through the honors program. What was the campus like, like at Signal Peak at that time? It was much smaller. It was, it was a lot smaller, and I remember um, my girlfriend Pam Musgrove and I, which now Sunbloom, <laughs> we would bring picnics, and um, the campus is so beautiful anyway, and we'd sit out by a picnic table by the biology building and have our, our picnic lunches, and we'd see snakes, and we'd see scorpions <laughs> and tarantulas. We even saw a Gila monster one time, mm-hmm. and, um, and then we could just go to class after that, but it was um, a lot smaller at that time. So uh, did you come back to see a... CAC much obviously your work in California but how often did you get over to the campus in the last 10 years that you've been um, working in California well when my son was going to start going there we went out there a couple of times and I've had to go out there to you know get transcripts or whatever because I transferred to ASU and then eventually the University of Arizona I got my master's degree but um my friend uh, Mary Sue Beers took over the uh, farm field ag venture program that we started at the University of Arizona Maricopa Ag Center. And it was moved to Central Arizona College in 2001. And that program is still going on at the campus. And um, she's in a, um, a mobile unit, and she has about two acres of radishes, and they have a pump, and, a, and she irrigates, and, and um, they do children's programs at CAC. And she reaches about 6,500 kids out there. And I've gone out several times to her programs, and helped her and we we've performed in that old building yeah we've performed in the building but we've done a lot of collaboration so i've been back there quite a few times that's the natural resource center is that, that's the, it is the natural, natural resource, resource center, center. Uh-huh. and that, and that's open for i believe that in the, throughout the county people can contact and bring the students there yes so yes. Uh, teachers will call mary sue or Lori words and sign up for a program and um she does a lot of this a lot of our curriculum is the same we share we collaborate it's uh, you're listening to CEC Live. Tom D. Camillo along with Joe Carrera. We're talking with Nancy K. Wood and her husband Al. And Nancy was an inductee into the CAC Wall of Success. And uh, a question I had about the music is you've used some terms fiddle music, bluegrass. What are the differences between this country music? There's for the sort of the novice of that genre, people lump, lump it together. But what are the differences of what you play compared to like country music and that kind of thing? Okay. The- the famous saying for Western music, it's when the, the cow has done the cowboy wrong. And they say country music <laughs> is when the cowgirl did the cowboy wrong or vice versa. <laughs> Fiddling is actually kind of a mix of um, Irish music, um, English, uh, uh, various um, types of music. And um, then also, oh, and Celtic music as well. Bluegrass originated from fiddle music. And also um, slave music, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, Bill Monroe is actually the father of bluegrass, and Ricky Skaggs is determined to keep bluegrass alive. Mm -hmm. And so usually bluegrass bands have typically have banjos, maybe a fiddle player, um, guitars, a lot of really tight vocal harmonies. And fiddle music is pretty much, there's not a lot of vocals in fiddle music, and a lot of the words are just sort of nonsensical. And it's just fun, like boil them cabbage down. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's fun, and people like to dance and clap to it. Is it always fast-paced? Is it? Um, no, fiddlers will play waltzes. And the fiddler uh, used to be um, actually the honored guest at a barn dance, and they paid the fiddler with meat or fruit or vegetables. But he usually, that's what he took for pay. They also say that a fiddler carries the fiddle in a bag, a canvas bag, and a violinist carries it in the case. You know, there's not much difference in the instruments themselves. And sometimes a fiddler will have their bridge a little bit lower just to get the double stops in and the double notes and things like that. But 
I know there was a girl I went to college with, and she was training classically oh, yes. with a violin. And I suggested, "Hey, can you play like the fiddle?" Boy, that was like a no-no. I shouldn't even <laughs> ever brought that up. <laughs> she was offended, really? well, but I liked it the other way. I said, ah, "I like that about music better than that." Yeah, <laughs> yeah there there are um, people that cross over, and also a lot of them will say, "You have like every bad habit there is." But I'm a self-taught fiddle mm-hmm. player, and so I had to teach myself. There were no teachers here. I didn't have any stringed instrument background whatsoever. So I taught myself how to play it. It's really been a fun road. <laughs> when you look at it and say fiddle violin, is there a difference? No, um, there's not a difference. They're the same instrument. Um, as I said, sometimes the fiddler will shave the bridge of the instrument down pretty flat. Mine's very flat. That's this part and right here. even fiddlers okay. have a hard time playing with my bridge because it's so flat. But I like to play a lot of double notes on my fiddle. And so it's just what you get used to. So it's really the playing style that defines the difference. What is the difference? What is the pl- how is the playing style difference between playing a violin and a fiddle? Um, violinists do a lot of vibrato, <laughs> and they do more classical type music. Mm-hmm. Um, fiddlers look for music. A lot of it has it's uh, re- been recorded but never written. Or if it's written, it's not really um, the same as when you're playing it live. The best way to learn fiddle music is by ear. And you have to train your ear to be able to pick up all those notes. And um, back in the olden days, there might be a song, just say Ragtime Annie, for example. And um, a fiddler would say, oh, I love that song. What is it? And they'd say, oh, that's Ragtime Annie. So he'd learn it. And then he'd go on to maybe another dance and, or barn dance or whatever. And another fiddler would be there and said, what's the name of that song? And he'd say, oh, Raggedy Ann. And he might play it <laughs> slightly different. So some fiddle songs have three or four different names. And no two fiddlers play exactly alike. So it's very much a, we, it's really kind of a grassroots roots right. music that roots you... Music is the, absolutely, That's yes. the defining word, the roots music. It's yeah. American roots music. And there's it. different kinds of fiddling. There's Appalachian, mm-hmm. there's Cajun fiddling. Um, Missouri. Missouri fiddling. There's uh, Northwest, Cape Britain, um, Canadian. And then there's Arizona, and then there's a mix of styles, which I am. <laughs> <laughs> so people bring, they hear this music, and it's passed along through cultural contact, really. Yes. Folk process, really. People ask me where I learned mm. to play the fiddle, and I'm self-taught. But I would say, well, I've got a little bit of Jack Darland and Bill Crow, Bob Cross and Bob Good, and you know, all the different fiddle players that helped me along during my path so far. And, and whenever I hear a new fiddle song, I might pick it up from that fiddler, and he also becomes a part of my my style. Where would you put somebody like Charlie Daniels? What, what is? Where does that? Oh, I got a gray. I got a grimace there. That's, well, no, he's he's a great country music <laughs> artist. But I think his I think his roots started in fiddling, didn't they? I think so. And and uh, he's you know he he made such a, a a big entry as a country musician performer, country music performer. But um, you know as a fiddler, that's I think that's his roots. So mm-hmm. very likely it was as uh, kind of old time fiddling. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It, it's just it's it's a really fun sort of instrument. It's fun music to to listen to, even if you don't listen to it on. Yes. And it's it's better live. I mean, it's oh, better yeah. to hear it live yeah. than sometimes you know something sure. listening yes. to your car. It's it really lends itself to to. You can, you can see the nuances yeah. that are going on uh, in the circle of musicians. And each fiddle has its own personality. And it's hard to play somebody else's fiddle sometimes. And they all have different tones, different though different woods, the age of the fiddle. There's all mine's a handmade fiddle by John Rounds in Tucson, Arizona. It was built in nineteen eighty five. And um, it's not a particularly old fiddle, but it's got a great sound to it. I get a lot of compliments on the sound of this one. Is there a difference where a lot of in terms of uh, violins being people are classically trained that they're going out and purchasing them where fiddles a lot of people will make them yes. themselves or yes. they'll buy them from a luthier yeah. that, that makes fit that specializes in making fiddles i had a friend that bought one at a um, thrift store and she was looking at it and she thought that's a good one and she's a fiddler and after she bought it she took it to um have it set up by her luthier and he said we better get this one appraised and it appraised out at forty thousand because it was. Um, oh my gosh! It was the last cl- fiddle could... that was in a collection of a certain type of fiddles. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> everybody's running out what to thrift find. stores they, right now looking yeah. for fiddles. Yeah. Right, yeah. and they wanted to they wanted to buy it from her, and she said, "No, I only paid twenty dollars for it, but uh, when my kids die, I'll sell. I'll tell them not to sell it for twenty five dollars or twenty dollars." <laughs> <laughs> and she still uses it. Um, or no, no it's in a case. She's passed away, but oh. she used it till the day she died. Yeah. And um, I don't know where the fiddle is now. Hopefully they're listening and they know. <laughs> I, I know. I got to play it, and it was really wonderful. You know, Nice uh, fiddle. Going back to the uh, distinction between 
fiddling and bluegrass. The name of a band that we perform with is called Fiddle Mania. And we, uh, uh, our bass player is the promoter, Ben Sandoval. And, and um, so our function as Fiddle Mania is to be at bluegrass concerts to show bluegrass musicians where their roots come from. <laughs> really? Because the old time fiddle tunes were around before bluegrass tunes. Uh, and a lot of them evolved into bluegrass tunes with the advent of that three style banjo picking technique that Bill Monroe uh, introduced in the late 40s. Yeah, we usually play at the Pine Top and the Benson Bluegrass Festivals, and we do the kids' workshops as well. So when, when you go to these type of events, are, are there a lot of people that come or, yes. or from all over yeah. the country? Yeah. They come from all over. Regional? Um, yeah. A lot of regional, but when, around Arizona, you're going to see a, a lot of uh, winter visitors from all parts of the country. And, and typically, Canada. they'll try to get a band from back east as well as some local bands. Do you see a lot of young people picking up the instrument? There's more and more young they're, people they're coming, coming in, and it's good to see because um, we don't want it to become a dying art. We have a lot of young parents with with the uh, with the uh, children, and they're just out for the weekend, and they see the music, and they become uh, animated by it, moved by it, to bring their children into the fold, and and so we'll we'll bring them in and introduce them in a workshop to the rhythm sounds of, of music. I could see teachers of elementary schools that had a skill to play that being successful in their classroom, incorporating that. Yes, when I was yeah, <laughs> and when I taught, you're smiling right now. Yeah, yeah. elementary, right? Yeah, I taught at um, Casa Grande, at Saguaro School, and Oka. And I would use my fiddle as a tool. It was it was a teaching tool, and um, we could do math with it. We could do uh, language arts. I taught creative writing by playing some like some animal songs, and then have them write about the sounds they heard on the fiddle. And then as I went on to um, Farm Field Adventures and Farm Smart, I was able to incorporate my music in there as well. Yeah, so the first time you pulled that out and the principal walked by, what was the reaction? I got a perfect evaluation that year. <laughs> <laughs> he thought that was a great tool. It's, uh, I, I could see it. My wife's a teacher, and I, and I, and I could see that incorporating something like that. Oh, you get attention, yeah. or you just go across the strings, man. They're well, when you can better relate, than a whistle. When, when, you got, when you got a little uh, a puppet of a farm animal mm -hmm. and you play a fiddle song, uh, with that, the kids just instantly are drawn in, because one kid, yeah. one student will be up there making the little puppet dance, and the other students are clapping along, wanting to be one to hold the puppet too. Yeah, we played bingo with you know on the fiddle and sing it to the kid, and I'm telling you, the teachers say we hear that song for weeks after your program <laughs> because the kids can relate to bingo. So we have about ten minutes left, but I would like you to see if we could play a couple more songs. Sure. What else would you? How about the bus song? Yeah, would you like to have the bus song? We that, can do that. That would be great. Okay, we'll and while you're getting set up, explain what the oh, instrument is. Oh, this instrument. This is called an auto harp. Okay. And uh, it's really uh, generically uh, termed a corded zither, uh, a zither with cord bars. And in the uh, late 1800s, the zither was a German, primarily a German instrument, and to pick a melody, you had to know where the strings were to play the notes. And in 1890, uh, some Germans in Philadelphia invented a, a, a way to incorporate chord bars uh, to play the instrument. So when you press the bar down, a chord is sounded. Now remember, when we play this song, I had to live with him while he was learning it. So, <laughs> But it's one of our most popular songs in our kids' show. The best song. Well, I want to go for a ride in the bus, the big old yellow school bus, to the D-Rex farm with all of us, take me for a ride in that yellow school bus. Now, click, clack, open up the bus door, click, clack, open up the bus door, ride in the front, ride in the back, open up the bus door, clickety-clack. So the engine, it go, trrr, trrr, the engine, it go, trrr, trrr, turn on the key, step on the gas, trrr, Hey, let's everybody make that bus engine sound together. Push your lips together with me. Everybody. Well, we got a few more horsepower in the crowd now. Now I want to honk the horn, horn, let's all honk the horn. ha ooga 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 honking on the horn. Well, we're riding out to the farm now. Cars are passing us by now. Sunny skies, fields in my eyes, riding on out of the farm now. Hey, you ready for a bus ride? Let's honk the horn. We'll drive the bus, making the bus sound. 
Ahuga. Well, there's big fields at the farm now, corn growing at the farm now, learning about food at the farm now, and there's tractors on the farm now. So the tractors, they go pop, pop, to the tractors, they go pop, to the pop, to the turn on the gas, roll over the wheel, pop, to the pop, to the pop. Okay, let's take a big deep breath, we're going to need it, make the tractor sound. Pop, to the pop, to the pop. And that's how they got the name Papa Johnny Tractor. Well, we've all had fun at the farm now. Hey, riding at the farm now. Spray ice bottle at the farm now. Let's ride home in the bus now. Hey, ready for the bus ride back to school? Hauga! I see Joe tapping his feet over there to the music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You're listening to CAC Live, Tom D. Camillo, along with Joe Carrero, and uh, we have Nancy K. Wood and her husband Al here, and uh, we have a few minutes left. We want to get another song from you guys. Sure. What, what else do you have in your repertoire? Well, I think we'll play um, Soldier's Joy. This is um, a real old, old fiddle tune from the a Revolutionary War, actually. Perfect. You did, it's, and it's funny you said earlier. A lot of the songs, a lot of the music doesn't have words to it. Huh. That's right. They no, do. They don't. Uh, this one does have words. Yes, it There's does. a lot of different versions and, and so on. But um, yeah, the, the the Revolutionary War guys would make up verses just to pass the time away. Yeah. And then some of the songs have animal sounds. Do we have time to do a quick animal? Sure. Sound? We could do that. Right. Woe meal woe. Okay. This song is called Woe meal woe, and I think a fiddler had a lot of time on his hands to write this one. But anyway, you'll hear the mule sounds. <laughs> hear the mule sounds yes. that's pretty cool <laughs> that that's great yes. that's 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 terrific you guys have one more you want to do sure we can we've got tons of songs yeah. we'd love to do one how so about choices <laughs> i know we'll do a uh, pig ankle rag okay we'll do one more here with nancy and al live on cac live in the kqck studios and uh and uh, we're just uh, we're thrilled to have you guys in here this is a lot of fun thanks for having us thank and you really yes. this is uh this is terrific so 
And then, um, what are we going to play now? This is a song called Pig Ankle Rag. Fiddle songs have some very odd names. <laughs> That's terrific. Thank you very much. We appreciate you guys coming into the studio. Just a quick reminder, that event at your house is November 16th, 17th, 18th? Well, it's, or is... I, it's the weekend before Thanksgiving. Okay. And I think it's the following weekend, but I'm not certain. I don't okay. have the calendar. The weekend before, before Thanksgiving, 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 Thanksgiving is the 16th, 17th, 18th, I believe. Is that so around, around, around that? Yeah. yeah. Around so that weekend. Everybody's welcome. It's a lot of fun. And what's it called? It's Nancy's Jam. Nancy's, Nancy's Jam. Jam. Yes. Okay. And then the tours, are they do you doing the tours of the cotton fields again this We are starting the tours. I think our first one is on Saturday, the 10th of November, and they can call us if they would like. I can give you a phone number. Yeah, go ahead. Why don't you give that out? Okay. My number is 520-560-1119, and you can call us for cotton tours or um, for the Fiddling Jam. Okay, with and if you're ever in El Centro, come to Farm Smart. <laughs> and that's and the farm tours are take place at 11 Mile Corner? 11 Mile Corner in Casa Grande. Okay. Haywood Farms. That's terrific. So thank you so much for coming out here today. It was Thanks really exciting. And, uh, we, you know, we hope to see you again. Enjoy the rest of your summer. And, um, you know, we'll have you, you know, we'll talk to you in the future and hopefully see you at the 2012 Wall of Success We'd event. We'd love to be there. Thank you thank so you. much. Nancy K. Wood, 2011 inductee, your husband, Al. And you've been listening to CAC Live. Terrific show today, Joe. And uh, we'll be back next Thursday at 1030 for the CAC Live program. For Joe Carrera, I'm Tom DiCamillo. Thanks for listening. Life can be tough, and good people can face great challenges. My name is Mark Windsor, and I'm an experienced attorney and counselor at law. I've helped many good people work through financial struggles and regain financial stability and prosperity. It can be overwhelming dealing with creditors, the frustrations of a loan modification, struggling with the stress of a short sell. Sometimes your decisions can lead to risks down the road that you couldn't foresee without a trusted counselor on your side. At times,